Hey folks, I'm back with another project. This time it's going to be a belt. This is Distressed Buffalo. And it's just a cool looking belt. I'm going to put this, this is going to be for stock. And I just thought it looks really cool. I wanted to order it. We'll see if it sells. Hopefully it will. I don't know, it looks cool. I have decided on a Dunham roller buckle. This won't need a keeper. It's already got a keeper built into the buckle here. And uh, I'll show you all that as we go along. So I've decided on my buckle. I'm going to use just some, I don't have any antique brass. Uh, this is antique brass and I thought that went good with the buckle or with the uh, blank here. I don't have any antique brass. <laughs> Chicago screws. But these are solid brass. So I'm going to knock the finish off them and we'll kind of distress them a little bit. Make them look antique. So let's get on with the project. They do make a, a bag punch or a slot punch for this and that works too. I don't have one. I've been doing it this way for years. I should probably get one of those one of these days. And you can just kind of clean it up a little bit. That's about all I'm going to worry about for now. I did draw in my tip here, so I'm going to cut that too. Now you can leave the, your template. This is from Maker's Leather Supply, and I can leave a link down below to the, the template set, or you can just go look at their site. I'll leave a link to their site. That's even better yet. But uh, I'm just going to follow my mark here. Now this part from about an, oh, probably an inch, three quarters of an inch maybe, behind this last hole is only going to be single layer for the buckle. The rest is all going to be the second layer on there. I stayed a little wide from my lines so that I'll sand it down to the line. So I don't know where I left off with this. I do have uh, my ends are ready to go. I don't have the holes punched in. I'm going to punch those once I get the back glued on. Um, I made a mark here and this is where my uh, backing is going to start. I'll go from here down through to, to the end. So I have to scuff this up because it's a pasted back. I can just take some, this is uh, some 120 grit. Yep. That I used a little bit for some sharpening tasks. 
and I don't have to really scuff it up a lot. Just enough that the glue is going to stick good. Some of the, one of the places I want it to stick really good is right up here at my line because I'm not going to stitch across here. I'm just going to stitch up to it. If I get any uh, glue on the front of the belt, it will just roll right off after it dries. Mostly dries. Probably don't want to wait until it's like super dry. But after it's mostly dry, it'll roll right off. Just roll it off with your thumb or one of those crepe erasers. certainly roll that. I'm just going to flip the blank back or the backing over and glue the next section and belts get the number nine quarter inch. This is a craft tool. It is a I don't know, craft tool number zero nine. <laughs> so I have already marked these using my blank. We'll, uh, I'm going to be making another blank here one of these days soon. We'll go through it together. So I'm just I just have to uh, I made my I made my marks just deep enough that I can kind of set the chisel or the punch into it. set it back in my punch mark there we go there are six holes punched in there I'm just gonna go around this is my number one Odin I'm just gonna go take that little I don't know I like to call it flash it's just after you sand it 
you get that little burr kind of thing. So that's all I'm taking off here. Not beveling it yet. Getting your <clears throat> stitch groove in the tip is probably one of the hardest places to get it. Get this thing out of my way. Um, so I'll usually run my corner, run that little tip piece, and then I'll go, go ahead and uh, do the rest of it. And just like most things, don't get in a hurry with it. Make sure you keep your your groover nice and tight to the edge. The fabric marking pen, so I know that it will come off easily. Right there. Now the other side here, this is where I'm going to start my groove. And there's two ways I can do this. I can use my my square and just follow it across but it's even so I'm not gonna have to worry about it but you want to make that start and stop one stops here the other starts there you want to make them in the same in the same plane you take your time getting around your tip And then your tip can look really nice along with the rest of your groove which doesn't have to be super deep you want to make sure though that it's pretty consistent if it's not you can go around to do it again which it looks like I want to make it just a slight bit deeper there we go that looks like a very nice consistent groove all the way along. I'm happy with that. I am going to uh, decide on which chisels that I want to use, which thread I want to use, and uh, get that together. I think I'm going to use probably on this belt the one millimeter brown. Um, I'll need to bevel my edges. I like to do that before I um, chisel but I'll probably do it after in this case just because you always have to have a good selection of thread around I decided that I was going to use a contrasting thread and you kinda gotta figure what you want these are all 0.8 millimeter do I want to go with a dark brown which I think would look really good on this and I think that's the way I'm gonna go I'm kinda of leaning that way um, or kind of a coffee medium brown this is more of a dark chocolate brown this is kind of a, a medium brown this is a tan which I don't care for the tan and this is more of a natural linen colored thread which I don't care for that either. This looks really nice on a black belt. So I think I'm going to go with the dark just because that's kind of uh, the way I like it. I do have a white, a plain white, or I could use a black if I wanted to. Um, I think that's all I got. Yep, that's about all I got. 
So I think this dark brown is going to look the best on it. Even on the back, this tan back, I think the dark brown will look nice on there too. So that's the way I'm going to go. These are the A Scare chisels that I've got. Um, they're on a 4mm spacing, but the tines are a little smaller than what my uh, craft tool chisels are. So I'm going to use these on this belt. I really like these a lot. Um, I have used these, I've used the heck out of these things. And they've been fantastic chisels for the task. I did have to do a little bit of work on them when I got them. Not much. And I broke the two prong almost immediately. So I took the six prong and I cut two prongs off it and just made it into a two prong because I need a two prong a lot more than I do a six. <laughs> so I've got a single prong a four and a two and that's usually does just fine for me. The first hole I'm going to make is I put a single hole right in the very tip and make darn sure you're straight if anything tip it a little towards the inside Beautiful. And that's the last time I'll use a single. <laughs> then when I go to the double, I'll start, I'll put my first tooth in there, and then I'll just kind of mark the hole. And then again, I might tip it so that I'm going a little bit to the inside. I'm only using a two prong here because I'm kind of going around a curve. Once I get to the straight I'll switch to the four prong. I always like to work away from myself when I'm doing the punching my stitch holes. Just remember with each hole, you want to punch every hole the same way. So if you're leaning a little in, just do it for every hole. Every time you punch a hole, you want to lean that little bit in. So, there's how they are on the front, and hopefully you can see the back there. They come out pretty good. I'm just going to keep going. I'm not going to make you watch me punch all these holes. As you're punching all your stitch holes, uh, when you get to the end, one thing you want to make sure is that your last hole hangs over the edge of the backing. So I've got one hole that goes just past the backing and that just helps to lock the backing down since I'm not doing a stitch line across it. I'm just stopping here. That'll lock that backing down so it doesn't come up. I've never had one come up yet so I should be in pretty good shape. I tried 
to get this to show. Maybe you can kind of tell there. How oh, that needle is starting to get kind of pitted and stuff. This. Remember I said I broke, I've only broken one John James needle. This was the mate to it. And it's finally gotten to a point where the finish has gotten in such bad shape from all the stitching that I gotta throw it out. Because it's just getting too hard to sew with. It uh, is causing problems when I run past another thread that it's starting to kind of nick the edges of the, of the other thread. So I have to pitch it. Kind of a shame. It's almost a uh, badge of honor, so to speak. Because <laughs> it didn't break. It's been about eight years, I want to say, that I've had this needle kicking around my shop. It's been a while. It's a more recent needle. This one might have been a couple of years. But you can't see any of that flaws in the finish. So, we can uh, properly say goodbye to my first John James needle that's gone from where. I know that in my, my stitching video that I put a link somewhere, um, I wasn't real clear on something like a belt where I'm going the same direction on two both stitch lines. I do things a little different Remember, I'll put, I'll put one thread through, and then I'll following my stitches so it goes this way, and I have to go over the top of that thread. Rather than coming through this way and pulling it up, it gets awkward for me because I'm not left-handed. I'll go through the other way. So you don't have to go through from the front. You can go through from the back. The stitch looks the same on both sides. It comes out exactly the same because I do the same stitch every single time. So I'm just putting my needle from the front because my holes are kind of funnel shaped. Put my needle through just to make open up that hole a little bit and then I'm going through from the back side. So I'm working from the back now and I'm holding this front thread instead of uh, when I did this side I was pulling down on this side now I have to pull up and towards me and go over that so I'm going over the top of this thread and coming back out and then I'll pull through and just give a little tug and I think you can probably see in the video they're coming out nice and angled I'll show it to you after I tap everything down this side I tap down and it looks really good. I'll do the same when I show it on later. I'll show the uh, how it looks after it's tapped down. So I just kind of use a needle from this side just to open up the hole a little bit. Then I run my needle through. And this way I'm never setting my needles down. I'm just kind of just kind of pick them up. Ouch. If you're not getting stabbed at least once with your needles, you're not doing something right. So stick it through, open it up, come through from the back. I'm pulling it up and towards me. Come through. Just pulling one goes down and away, and one comes up and towards me. And this just manages to allow me to keep some level of speed going because, quite frankly, I don't have all day to sit here and stitch belts. I've still got, I took orders for a couple of wallets too now. Uh, <laughs> And like an idiot, it's on a design I don't have perfected yet. So, I have to work that out. I also have a tooled checkbook cover that I have to get done. 
So, I have a lot to do yet. I'm not real good at tooling, so it always takes me a little longer to do that. I'm going to be doing a tool belt, too. But I'm going to be using one of Tandy's craft aids to do that. So we'll see how that comes out. So I got you zoomed in pretty good. That's how the stitching comes out. Hopefully you can tell. I got I know I got a lot of glare, but like I said before, I've got to have good lighting. It's the only way you can get this job done. That's what it looks like on the front. Slide that down a little. That's after it's all tapped down. This is the hammer I've been using. One of them that we did the uh, polishing on. i got to clean the wax off of there. Yeah, that's one of them we dressed up. One of our cheap hammers. And then the back. And you can see, the stitching came out equal on either side. Both very nicely got that pretty little angle that everybody wants to see. I think that Odin beveler gives me just a, a really nice edge to work with. That is the number five Odin beveler. And I do like it. I like just, it gives me a good, fairly rounded edge. A little clean up with some sandpaper. I could use a bigger beveler, but in, the, in belts, it gives me just what I want and I don't have to change it when I you know change to a different beveler when I get to the thin end I like it as I'm applying some dye to the edges here I wanted to come back and say something um, you have to be prepared for some migration and what I mean by that is your dye is gonna migrate in now normally I don't usually ever see it go past my stitch line but this is a, the dye that I used on the edge is the same color as the back. So it should even out and not be too bad. If it is, I'll just put another coat on the back. It's not a big deal for me. But that's it's something to consider. If you're trying to do a different color on your edge than you are on your back or on your front. Now, the front, being that it's got a finish on it, it didn't migrate. So, um, that worked out okay. Thank God. I didn't want it to migrate on the front, so I was really extra careful going along the front side. And uh, just got it where it had to be. <clears throat> but on the back, it did migrate, and that's okay. I don't mind. Um, like I said, I'll just put another coat on there if I need to, so it's not a big deal. But it's something to consider when you're doing a project like this, and you're doing, if you want to do a different color edge, you might want to go to an edge paint in that case. I'm not a big fan of edge paints, but they can they can be a little more advantageous there. I buffed that haze off. Uh, you're never going to get an absolutely perfect... Well, okay, I can sit here and get that perfect edge. You have to evaluate how much time you want to spend to get that perfect edge. And maybe I will do just that one of these days and just do a video on getting the perfect edge uh, and give you that dye burnished perfect edge on two pieces of veg tan leather um, just to show you how long it takes and what really goes into getting that absolutely perfect perfect edge that looks like glass I might just do that and black doesn't hide anything from anybody just so you know. <laughs> Nor does brown. Dark colors just don't hide anything. But that's what it turned out. 
how it turned out. There are still some flaws in the edge. Um, the final dimension on this at this point is um, an inch and seven sixteenths, so it's just shy of an inch and a half, which is fine. That works out okay. And really, belts kind of get abused, so you don't need to go getting all crazy on it. Um, I do need to take a final measurement and see what the length is on this. So I know what, I'll put a tag on it so I know what the size is. Alright, Resoline is dry. I'm just going and buffing. I've seen people go over this again and they'll uh, use like token oil. You don't need to. All I'm going to do now is a little Connolly's hide care on the front side. Ugh. I just take my old t-shirts, cut them up, they make uh, pretty nice little applicators. This is kind of this will kind of clean and protect at the same time. So any dye that kind of spilled off along the edges when I was doing the edge coating or the edge finishing, this will take that off because that stuff never really got to sink in. attention to the stitch lines because I want to try to get all that Connelly's out of the stitch lines. Get most of that rubbed in and then I'll get the stitch lines all care taken care of. So you can see what I mean by in the stitch lines and you can see how nice that belt looks. It's gorgeous. The back looks beautiful. The edges, I'm going to buff those a little bit more. It's looking gorgeous. Get these uh, stitch lines cleaned. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Alright, I already had the uh, ending to this video shot. I decided that I am going to put a buckle on it. I'm just going to put a solid brass buckle on it. I want this belt to be ready to go as soon as somebody decides they like it and want to buy it. So, it's going to be ready to go because I think I already got it sold. I'm just going to use a solid brass buckle. This particular one came from Weaver and I don't have any more of the buffalo to make a keeper out of. I do have some of this. I'm going to I'll dye it another, give it another coat of dye, maybe two to darken it up a little bit so it's a little, little bit darker. All right, so here's the leather that I'm going to use for my keeper. And it's going to be where it goes is between the two uh, Chicago screws. So it's going to lay right between here and go around the belt. So it's going to go through this layer and this layer. So I want to get my size 
And to do that, I'm just going to get this in the camera better. I'm going to hold those pieces together here, and I'm just going to go around it and pull it fairly tight and line them up just like that. And I'm going to take something and I'm going to mark across both pieces. At the same point, hopefully you can see that. Okay, I got both pieces marked there. See? It's hard for me to see it in the camera, so let me. Okay, so both pieces are marked at the same spot. And that should get me really close with the keeper. And all I need to do is now set the belt aside. I'm done with that for a little bit. Grab a cutting mat. Not that one. That's ugly. Not that this one's a lot better, but it's better. And just grab two rulers. Or, you know, my ruler and my square. Make sure you're up tight on here. Line up your mark to cut. Just add my knife, there it is. Go ahead and just cut her off. Don't worry about cutting through in one pass. I've heard people say, oh, you gotta cut it through in one pass or you're gonna get a jagged cut. Don't worry about that. It's not that critical. Line up the other one. Now inevitably, these will wind up just a touch short, but that's okay. The leather has a little stretch to it, so we are good. I actually want it to stretch a little bit so it holds a little snugger on the belt. We will grab the number 5 Odin Beveler. Go ahead and bevel it. We'll bevel all four edges. And there we go. I will go ahead and burnish my edges. I do know this is going to fit because I'm just that good. Now, that's the way I've been making them for years. Got my keeper all ready to go. I only need one needle for this part. And I know I just threw a few of them in here, so here's one. Now there's two ways to make this look real pretty. You can do an X on the outside or you can just go across and put the X on the inside. It doesn't really matter. I frankly don't care. So I'm <laughs> I, I know that sounds kind of bad. I'm just going to kind of open up the holes a little bit from the outside. I'm going to start my stitching from the inside because I want to hide my knot. There will be a knot tied in the end. And actually came out oops, let's get that in the camera came out to looking pretty good here so I think we're in good shape there we go so I'm gonna pull that through I'm gonna leave a couple inches hanging off so that I've got something left to tie a knot with <laughs> 
and then I'm going to go through the same side here and there's probably a million videos on making belt keepers I have staples I could do this with staples um, if I'm like making a whole crap load of them I'll use staples just because it's a lot quicker um, it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference to me either way So just kind of form it a little bit. You want the two ends to meet up. So they're just going to kind of meet up and once you're all done they'll flatten out. <clears throat> this is just one stitch and one is not going to hold it tight. So now I'm going to cross on the back side and come through I hope let's poke through there once there we go I'm having a, a, a bad arthritis day today it's just having a hard time getting anything to cooperate using my fingers so I'm just gonna kinda hold it in place as well as I can because that's the part that's not going real well today just over a couple of times there keeping everything as close together as I can on the inside I've got my X I hope you can see that and we're just going to cut this off just like that and I'm just going to tie a knot in here regular old square knot so let's get both of them out the same side so I'm going left over right coming through get proper tension I have to pull it back through I'll go back through the back to where it was and we'll go right over left a square knot is basically it's two granny knots one on top of the other one tied opposite directions if that makes sense one of these days I'll get my macrame stuff out we'll do a pot holder pot hanger or something <coughs> And I'll show you what a square knot does. I like doing pot hangers. They're kind of nice. Kind of fun to do. And they're easy. Especially when you're just using square knots. So I'm cutting these off. I'm leaving them kind of long. It's helpful if you can hang on to things. Kind of melt that down. I'm very congested today again. Melt that down. And there we go. We have a belt keeper. I did not wet form this. I'm not gonna. It's it is what it is. Um, mostly because this is kind of a light duty belt it's not as I mean it's double layered but it is not as heavy duty as my other belts so when you are figuring out the length of the Chicago screw that you need these are 3 16 inch and uh, that is the length of the post from the bottom of the head to the top of the post so you want to keep that to the thickness of one ply or just a little over the thickness of one ply so when I go and put this in here 
it comes through the other side but when I go with the second piece it doesn't come through both pieces because I want that screw to go through there and kind of cinch down on everything. Does that make sense? I want the screw to do its job. So now this away. Hold that upside down. So if you lay your belt this way, this is the easiest way that I've found to make sure I get the buckles on the right way. This is the way I want my buckle on. So I'm going to flip the tongue back. roll this on and as I'm coming through I'll slide the tongue through so it goes like that. Easiest way I found to do it. Line up my holes and drop my screw in here. I had a proper screwdriver here. I don't know what I did with it. Use a screwdriver that fits the slot. This is obviously not the appropriate screwdriver. <laughs> but it's what I got on my... I don't know what I did with the right, the other one. Alright. Oops, you know what I forgot? I forgot to slip the keeper in there. So the keeper is going to go between the two Chicago screws. Screws are really short, by the way. <laughs> so if you look at that screw head, that's a really short screw. Not a lot of threads there. Some people will Loctite these in place. I don't. I've never had one come loose yet. Probably because of the way I do it, I leave that little space in there. So that when you tighten them down, the leather is going to be pushing against the screw. Alright, so there's our screws in the back, screws and keeper in the front. When we run in here, that's what it looks like all together. I think it looks pretty good with that uh, brass buckle on there. And, you know, maybe I'm a little anal retentive. Actually, it would go this way. <laughs> Maybe I'm a little anal retentive by wanting my screws to match my buckle. But you know what? It's little details like that that set a custom belt maker apart from everybody else. Those little details of, I use my Chicago screws match my buckle. Not only is my buckle not plated, it is solid brass. My Chicago screws are solid black brass because plating can wear off. I could show you some brass plated stuff that I used on my dog's collar. There's no plating left on it and it wasn't brass underneath. It was steel and it looks really ugly right now. Alrighty folks, the uh, what do we call it? Distressed? Vintage maybe? Buffalo belt. Looks great. The uh, edge finish is beautiful. I couldn't have asked for any better if I tried. Turned out nice. Belt turned out great. Um, there was a little variance in thickness on the Buffalo, but that's okay. It still came out great. The backing is uh, just a veg tan and I dyed it. Some people think it's crazy to go with making sure that my Chicago screws and my buckle match. 
Um, I don't think that's crazy at all. I think that's the way it should be. Anybody that doesn't, well, then don't. <laughs> I think it's the way it should be. And I think uh, as makers in this custom industry, need to be sure that we're doing little things like that because it makes all the difference. And your customers should expect that. So I made sure that I ordered special Chicago screws to make sure that they matched the buckle. They are solid brass. They're not brass plated. I've had brass plating come off before. And I've had brass plating over steel that doesn't look good after it comes off. So anyway, there you go. That's the end of another video. Check the links below. Um, some of the affiliate links. I'll have some links to some of the tools that I've used while making this video. Some of the hardware or where you can get the hardware. Um, and there you go. That's going to be it for now. So, y'all stay safe. God bless. I will catch you in the next video.